Hi, I'm Elliot Chodoff. I'm from Israel. I was just with Gene Valentino on the Grassroots Truthcast. A great show. Wonderful guy teaching important stuff to the American people. So please subscribe. George Soros looks set to control radio company Odyssey, and it's more than 220 stations nationwide, of course, stoking fears of an ultra-progressive billionaire having a megaphone during the 2024 election. Joining us now to break this down is our friend Gene Valentino of the Grassroots Truthcast and GeneValentino.com. Gene, uh, this is disturbing a lot of people. This is kind of, this, this story broke last week, and it's interesting to me to watch the uh, the reaction from the public, because it used to be you'd hear things about Soros and they'd say, oh, you, you can't talk bad about him. You're an anti-Semite if you say anything bad about George Soros. But now it's just like, oh, no, George, 20, 220 stations. No, you know what I mean? The nation is like mourning right now. The George Soros Radio Network starring <laughs> Fred Gwynn, also known as Herman on the Munsters. Former f former judge on a Trump case that went upside down overnight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, how bad is this? I mean, some might argue, Gene, that, well, you know, this is largely terrestrial radio, but I looked into Odyssey a bit. They're in podcasting as well. They're not as, uh, you know, old school as one might think. So it is... Uh, definitely a, a noteworthy blip in the media sphere. What do you think? What's the effect? Well, the effect is uh, private uh, social Marxist uh, uh, misfit interests trying to take hold of public opinion, and I don't see it surviving. Uh, oh, he, he may have to sell off part of the network, or he may find himself in a psychological transformation of his own if he expects to live off revenue and advertising mainstream media will, and main, the mainstream public uh, uh will will be for will have to impose their their uh, uh acceptance or denial of his programming format and that political extreme uh, it's not even progressive. It's so far left that I think it's, uh, if people don't realize it's a socialistic Marxist, Marxist approach to transforming your thinking. You remember, uh, free enterprise failed under Marxism and socialism. Uh, the, the, the government is going to uh, force business people to have to think differently under that kind of thinking, and as a result, under uh, under uh, Soros's thinking, and if they do, then free spirit of free enterprise is going to wash by the wayside. So I don't see it surviving because the very listener to a Soros network of radio and television is anti-free spirit, anti-democracy anti-economic uh, and it's going to encroach on free enterprise yeah and you know the thing is is uh gene it's so great to see you as always um the thing is is liberal talk radio it, it's almost sounds oxymoronic and there's a reason for that <laughs> because it never lasts i mean one of the funniest bits i ever heard was when alec baldwin tried to host a talk radio show in new york and you could tell Listen, I, I'm not going to pretend that I, I can be a great actor, but I do know how to do radio, and Alec Baldwin did not. It was a, it was a disaster. Yeah. But the problem is, is you have what the left does, and you know this, Gene, and if you don't know it, ask Mike Lindell. They will go after you if they don't like your political stance, and they will try and ruin you. They will organize boycotts. They will do whatever they have to do. Rush talked about this years ago, the late, great Rush Limbaugh. Um, uh, Hannity's mentioned it. Hell, all of them. Levin, all of them. But they can't get listeners to their own platform. How does George Soros think that he's going to force that? Because while he may be able to say, 
well, we can afford it if we don't have a lot of listeners. I've got a bank. I can bankroll all of this. 220 some odd stations that even for George Soros, that's a lot to bankroll if you're not getting the advertisers uh, because you're not drawing any listeners. Absolutely, Stephen. And now compare that to your earlier guest and this undercurrent of American truckers who are refusing to deliver goods and services to New York City. It might uh, it might explode to the entire state. But if 10 percent of the goods and services are denied in the city of New York City, you're talking about a catastrophic failure of an economic supply chain network system in just the city. That is the power of the public that George Soros is in for a surprise with. He can't control the economy. He can try through government and through regulation, which hopefully the people will wake up and realize government control of your free enterprise capability is a wrongful thing. But when until then, until government's overreach is really pervasive, think of those American truckers. The story I read today, I think, is the same thing you're referring to, is only 10% of these, in, just the independent truckers now, not mind you, these aren't the, the, uh, con the truckers working for bigger trucking fleet firms. I'm talking about the independent guy who pulls his trucking rig up into the back of his yard and enjoys a, his own private way of life and waits for his trucker broker to put him on the next job delivery. Those guys, if they uh, boycott New York City, New York City, sanctuary city, Mr. Adams, are you listening? Because this is the tip of the iceberg for every other blue sanctuary city that's trying to uh, support uh, the, 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 the human uh, concern that we should have for all these illegal migrants now being uh, suggested come into your home and mine and take the spare couch and live with us is, is antithetical to everything else that we have before us that would be norm, what I would call normal free enterprise. So Soros, I don't think, is going to have a very good experience with his free market um, approach. He's got a lot of bucks to acquire the network. I'll give you that. But you got to you got to keep that network running off loyal subscribers, lo loyal listeners, loyal advertisers. I don't think it's going to follow through in a society that doesn't appreci appreciate Marxism and socialism. Yeah, you'd think he could look at the numbers that CNN, MSN, DNC, all the all these, you know, outlets, you'd look at the numbers that they're pulling in these days and go, wait a minute, maybe this is a bad investment. These, you know, long standing media giants are uh, now on the wane. Uh, definitely not looking good. Seem to only be being played in, um, I don't know, airports and hotel lobbies, perhaps. But Gene, we've got a headline inbound. And when we get back, I want to pick up on this topic and, and kind of pick your brain about does an enterprise like this for someone like George Soros even need revenue? Or is narrative control maybe worth more than a loss of revenue? So we'll pick up right there after this headline with today's News Talk TNT. On air and on the app. I listen on the app. Stay up to date around the clock. I listen, therefore I know. Today's News Talk Radio, TNT. Gene, we live in a befuddling age where it seems as though media giants are willing to take an L financially uh, just to have their sword in the cultural warfare. Do you think this could uh, sort of be the category that Soros is looking at right here? Or as Hillary Killary would say, what difference does it make? Yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he can stick his oar in that, in that water. Um, and he is a uh, entrepreneur is entitled to do that. Freedom of uh, expression and entitlement for him should be thought of, uh, he should think of it in terms of extending it to the average uh, person in the same way. But um, sometimes we learn, hey, that's what free enterprise is all about, right? We learn from our mistakes as much as our successes. So maybe he will learn from a few mistakes as to how he's treated people and how he admonishes those who are not from the same class as he is. That's a distinction that other networks and network owners, including TNT, 
distinguish themselves. Talk about a network. You guys uh, are, are worrying about the grassroots folks from around the world and getting the word out. I couldn't be prouder. I couldn't be happier to be with such a network of people because you are the people. You do respect this, the average citizen's uh, opinion. And my words, can you imagine a, C, a, a Soros owning a TNT? Wonder what this program would look like after he got involved. <laughs> Well, we'd have two new hosts. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> and one new gu out. and one guest gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, Gene, that really drives me nuts about this. First of all, let's make a couple of distinctions here. I, I you guys remember a couple of years ago when everybody was showing a clip of all the newscasters reading the exact same statement, and it was blown up as look at this, they are totally manipulated. Well, that was Sinclair Broadcasting. They are very conservative, and that was their company-wide mission statement. That always got misconstrued and taken out of context. But because I work in radio and I know a couple of Sinclair stations and folks that work at them, I was like, oh, you guys are making a mountain out of a molehill. But this is different because George Soros truly is trying to push a socialistic uh, system, Marxist, if we're honest, down our throats and he will do it no matter what because his he makes money by destroying currency that's how he's always done it so even if he does as he to hesher's point even if he says i'll take the financial hit if i can just shape the narrative but what drives me nuts uh guys is that they know the left that is they will use tactics that many on the right would never even contemplate tactics like the boycott tactics like call them up and make threatening phone calls to the host and yep. whatever. And the left does that every day, even as we speak, they're doing it. And I just wonder if, if at some point the American people are going to say, you know what, we're going to flip that and we're going to do it back to you and you and see how you like it. When we call out every advertiser that would even consider advertising on a Soros owned uh, uh, Odyssey net, uh, you know, station. Because then all of a sudden it's then all of a sudden it's two can play at this game. I want. Do you think that that's ever going to happen? Do you think that the right would ever employ those kinds of tactics against the left? Well, they could have. Perfect example would have been Murdoch's takeover of Fox, uh, going way back to the um, uh, to the early days. We didn't see that happen. There was a balanced approach in both sides of the fence. Uh, and that's what saved. That's what made Fox good for so long. But um, uh, Daddy, uh, uh, da um, Mur uh, the father, uh, is now turning a lot of the operations over to the two Murdoch sons, and uh, we see a stronger left tendency at uh, uh, at Fox. But that doesn't mean they're out of the game. It doesn't mean that um, that uh, the public should be denied the right to hear the progressive left side. It means that uh, that's different than a than a Soros coming in and just controlling the narrative, which Fox does not do. And in that spirit, keep your eye on and people you were referring to earlier behind the scenes, uh, Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi, uh, and their background on the... Uh, detail of the Russian hoax as it relates to the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago and new developments coming out. Do you think that kind of story would be evidenced on Soros's network? It is on our networks. It is on elsewhere. But that narrative would never get out. You would never know about it if that was your only uh, source of information. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and and Gene, there's another interesting factor here. There's sort of a um, common uh, reactionary conservative talking point that says, "Oh, George Soros has been kicked out of six countries." But then you look at the fact checkers and stuff, and they're like, "Well, no, he hasn't been kicked out of six countries." But if you go to like somewhere that's being a little bit more objective about it, like for example, Investment Watch blog, uh, they talk about it and. You know, there there are issues. Uh, countries, uh, Pakistan, Poland, Turkey, Russia, Hungary um, have all had issues with open society and done things to limit the influence that George Soros's NGO, Open Society, has had in their countries. And even Israel has said Soros is not welcome there. So it's like, 
you know, it's, it's not the kind of thing that you can just push to the side and say, oh, that's a conservative talking point. No, quite factually, in those six and then seven countries, if you had Israel, he has had a lot of negative ramifications on their culture and their media. Well, you brought up an excellent point. I don't know if we have time to go into it, but I will say this. If Soros was a true American, he would welcome alternative expression, just as most American outlets do in this nation. The problem is, is when the narrative's controlled, like you said, mostly in socialistic, um, uh, 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 very Marxist, liberal, uh, communist states, there's no room for free expression over there. The narrative is jammed down your throat. You don't even know what the real narrative is. The beauty in America is that we have those options. What I would suggest, which is a spin a little bit, uh, Brian, on what you're saying is, as Americans, we need to get our congressmen and women to step up and create legislation that denies these foreigners from overzealous influence, including China. We need to recapture to the other extreme all the land and assets they own in the United States and get them out of our stock market as an extreme uh, point I'm making to what you're talking about with George Soros. Is George Soros going to be acquiring a network to control a narrative to take down America? And what are we doing about it to prevent it from happening in the first place? Yeah. Well, I would just say this, Gene, to wrap things up on my from my perspective. If we do get Trump as, as, as number 47, and he does win this, I think the first thing he has to do is clean house on all the three-letter agencies, DOJ, uh, probably first among them. And then he needs to take a very hard look at some of these groups, these NGOs that that Soros funds. And I would start with Media Matters and say, okay, we're going to look at this. And if we find that you have, you say that you're a 501c3 nonpartisan completely, if we find that there's any evidence that that's not true, we're shutting you down. And guess what? That would take about... 30 minutes to discover and they'd be done, but we'll see Gene Valentino, man. I wish we had another hour with you. Make sure to check Gene out at genevalentino.com. Also the grassroots truth cast with Gene Valentino on all your favorite streaming platforms. God bless you, Gene Valentino. We'll talk soon. Thanks for joining us on state of the nation. Man. God bless you, brother. Close the border. There we go. Good, good call. You're watching state of the nation on today's news talk. TNT. Issues that dominate America. This is State of the Nation on today's News Talk Radio, TNT.